Hi you guys, it's Nikki Delaney back with another video. Today I am uh, talking to you guys about my semaglutide journey, answering all your questions that you guys have been asking on TikTok and on YouTube. And um, yeah, let's just jump right in. All right, so first and foremost, while we're talking about this medication, you will hear me say semaglutide, but it also, semaglutide falls in the GLP-1 family. So if this information applies to all of the medications within that family, so that could be Ozempic, Wegovy, whichever form of the medication that you're on, the information applies to, to all of them. And in my personal experience, I have been on semaglutide the entire time. I have not tried Wegovy or Ozempic or um, there's a new one, Trizepatide. I haven't tried any of those yet. I have just been on semaglutide completely. Another thing I want to say before we get started, I am a registered nurse. All the information that I'm going to give you is based off of my experiences and my research, but I am not your nurse and I am not your doctor. So this is just for informational purposes. If you are interested in this medication, please go see your primary care provider or another healthcare professional who can go over everything with you you and your specific situation. You guys, I cannot stress that enough. Everyone's bodies are different. Everyone's health history is different. So you have to do what is best for you. And you'll hear me say that throughout this video because there are no blanket statements of things that apply to everyone in the world. So if this is something, if you're listening through the video, throughout the video and this is something that you would be interested in, definitely go see your doctor, your healthcare practitioner, your weight loss management provider, and get the information from them and let them talk to you about it specifically about how this medication can help you. So let's jump right into the questions now. So what is semaglutide? Semaglutide falls in the family of GLP-1 agonist, and that is glucagon-like peptide agonist. So these medications mimic glucagon in the body. The four main ways that the semaglutide works is by stimulating the release of insulin, reducing the glucose production in the liver, slowing down digestion to help control. The fact that it slows down your digestion as well as giving you the feeling of being more full is going to trick your brain into feeling like you're always full so you're not always looking for like another meal, another meal, another meal. And that's one of the primary ways that you end up losing weight on this drug. Additionally, the fact that it's slowing down your GI tract is going to also help you feel more full for longer but also helps to decrease your blood sugars. So initially this medication was made for diabetics to help them control their blood sugars. And what they found over time is that it was very effective in helping people to lose weight. Along with helping people to lose weight came a lot of other amazing outcomes from this medication, such as decreasing the risk of cardiovascular incidents, um, such as heart attacks and strokes, also um, better kidney function, decreasing the occurrence of fatty liver, helping people to control their blood pressures, and so much more. All right, so let's talk about my thoughts on semaglutide. There's been a lot of controversy online about it. There's a lot of people that are for it, a lot of people that are against it. And I feel like some people are just not looking at the full picture of it to really understand why this medication is as amazing as it is. As a healthcare professional, I will say that I've worked at both ends of the spectrum in healthcare. Um, when I worked, before I became a nurse, I worked in like family practice and I saw that there's a lot of preventative health that happens in family practice. A lot of people coming in for their checkups and doing all the things to prevent themselves from getting sick and having issues that get worse, right? Now I'm on the back end of that as a registered nurse, I'm working as an ICU nurse and a lot of patients that I take care of in the ICU, they could have used those preventative of health tools to uh, prevent the issues that they're having, but they didn't know or they didn't have the resources available to them. And so I see a lot of people who come in with kidney failure and now they're on diabetes, or I see people who have fatty liver or people that are diabetics who have a hard time controlling their diabetes. A lot of people who don't know that they have diabetes until they're all of a sudden in the ICU and DKA, which is diabetic ketoacidosis. 
And so I, uh, I look at semaglutide as a tool to help people. Like it's not a hundred percent preventative because obviously if you're coming to take, to get prescribed semaglutide, you do know that you have an issue with your weight, but I do feel like it would help to prevent you to get to the next level where you are sick and you are in the ICU and you are dealing with liver issues, kidney failure, all of those things that can stem from obesity. Um, so I think it's a fantastic tool to help people with that. I have seen the surprise on a lot of my clients' faces when we, when we sit down and we go over their lab work. They had no idea that they were pre-diabetic. They were like, oh, I just put on an extra 30 pounds and that's it. And they don't understand the repercussions health-wise as far as what putting on that extra weight means for your body and how putting on extra weight and continually gaining more and more weight without making those healthy lifestyle changes is going to affect your body. So I think semaglutide is an amazing tool. I think also in our country in the past, in order for you to be prescribed weight loss medication or in order for you to be cleared for weight loss surgery, you have to be like morbidly obese before you could even be approved for these types of things. So I think it's phenomenal that we don't, we're not waiting until people get to that point you don't have to be 400 or 500 pounds to say, hey, I need help and to get the resources that you need to help you. I think it also opens the door to talk about some of the issues that cause people to have issues with obesity because there are so many health issues that can cause people to gain weight and not just gain the weight, but hold on to that weight. Um, there are also a lot of health issues, mental health issues also that kind of feed into that, like depression, anxiety, being an emotional eater. Hi, hello, I'm one of those <laughs> um, that can cause people to gain weight and hold on to that weight as well. So I think that the conversation of semaglutide, Ozempic, Wegovy, it's opened the door to talk about obesity and why it's an issue and how to get to the bottom of it. And it has been a phenomenal uh, tool um, to help people to get to the other side of that and to prevent them from having worse issues that are related to obesity. So I am very glad to be able to not just take it myself and to help myself out um, before issues get worse, but also to be able to be a resource to my community and my squad and people that come in to see me to, um, to be prescribed semaglutide and to be able to help them on their weight loss journey as well. So next, let's talk about how this medication is administered. It is administered via a shot. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions about my dosing and how my video looked a little bit different than what you guys are used to. And it really just depends on where you're getting your semaglutide from. If you are getting it from the pharmacy, they may put it in a pre-dose pen where you're just dialing up your dose and um, injecting yourself once weekly. If you're getting it from compounding pharmacy, you may get it pre you may get it drawn up in insulin syringes, just depending on who's giving it to you, who's doing your dosing, et cetera, et cetera. So also I've gotten questions about why my semaglutide looks like it's pink. And that is because the pharmacy that I use mixes it with B12. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about B12 and how B12 helps with when you're taking it with a semaglutide a little later on in the video, but that is um, why my semaglutide is pink and why mine is in a insulin syringe is because I draw it up myself on a weekly basis um, at my med spa and I administer it to myself. Next, let's talk about some of the side effects. Because semaglutide is working on your GI tract most of the side effects are going to be GI related. The most common ones are nausea, occasional vomiting with the nausea, loose stools, or constipation. And that all has to do with the fact that you're slowing down the GI tract, um, which can cause all of those side effects. My next question that I received was, is there any way around those side effects? And I would say, that although most of the time when you have the side effects, it may be most commonly like when you're increasing your dose or when you're first starting the medication, a lot of the side effects can be mitigated by what you're eating. If you are eating things that are like high carb or high, high sugar or like very greasy foods, that is going to cause you to have more nausea and possibly have loose stools. 
So by changing some of your eating habits, decreasing those greasy, sugary, carb-filled foods in your diet, you will help yourself tremendously to get around having those bouts of diarrhea or nausea. Vomiting is something that might happen. It really just depends on the level of nausea that you have. So once again, just kind of, if you are having issues with nausea, you would pretty much just look at what you're eating and make changes to what you're eating and see if that is able to help you. Outside of that, there are different things you can do. You can talk to your prescribing um, provider to see if they can offer you some Zofran just over the counter to help with the nausea and they've had good results with that and so there are ways to kind of get around most of the nausea and once again it really depends on your body everyone's different but most of the clients that I have say that their nausea is very minimal if they do have it it's usually the day of their shot um, and more specifically days when we are increasing their dose they may feel a little bit nauseous that day and maybe the day after but the nausea is not consistent um, it kind of it fluctuates it comes and goes it's it's not a consistent thing where you're feeling nauseous all the time if you are then once again I would definitely recommend that you talk to your provider and see if there's a way that you guys can work together to maybe decrease your dose maybe it's too much for you maybe they titrated you a little too fast um, but talk to them about that and they can make adjustments to your dosage and um, to talk to you a little bit more about that to find ways to help you through the nausea. How long does it take semaglutide to start working? The medication starts to work almost immediately when you start to take it, but it will take a couple of weeks before you start to see some of the bigger um, side effects, not necessarily side effects, but the bigger benefits of it. For example, most people are not going to see the appetite suppression completely within the first couple of weeks. You may still have those cravings for sugary foods and you may still be able to eat a full meal those first couple of weeks. It's gonna take a little while before that starts to kick in um, and before you start to see that with every meal or every day. When it comes to weight loss, most people start to see weight loss within the first couple of weeks, but a lot of people don't see like the larger numbers of weight loss on a weekly basis until they get to the higher dosages from what I'm seeing. Usually once they get to like one milligram and above is when they're starting to see more consistent weight loss on the scale. Um, once again, this really depends on your body, how your body reacts to the medication, and also what you're doing outside of the medication. I tell people this is a medication that you will probably see weight loss without doing anything in the very beginning. But if you have a significant goal of what you're trying to reach, I highly suggest that you do the work. And that includes being more physically active, and that also includes drinking more water and eating healthier. If you really want to see consistent um, movement of the numbers on the scale. I'll talk a little bit more about my experience a little bit later in the video, but I myself even had some weight loss initially without doing anything, but that's going to change if you are not consistent and you're not making those lifestyle changes. So I'll talk to you guys a little bit about why I started taking semaglutide. I myself, I'm definitely in the overweight category. Um, looking at my height and my weight, um, I would be classified as obese. I um, have been having issues with my weight for a while because I do have issues with my thyroid. If you know anything about thyroid disease, it can be a roller coaster. It is a hormonal roller coaster. And I have gone from having hyperthyroid where my thyroid was overactive and I couldn't keep weight on um, to save my life. I was having extreme like anxiety attacks. My thyroid levels were so extremely high. This is after having my son. And then I started seeing an endocrinologist that over prescribed medication that essentially killed my thyroid and my thyroid stopped working completely. And from there, it was just downhill. I packed on weight and packed on weight and packed on weight. And it didn't matter what I did, I was still gaining weight. And I'm talking about, I was extreme calorie counting um, to the point where I pretty much, I can admit now, but I pretty much had an eating disorder. I was counting every single calorie. I would not eat more than 800 calories a day. If I did eat more than 800 calories a day, then I would subtract however many calories I went over out of my calories for the next day. That's how bad it was. I was working out two and three times a day. 
Um, and I'm not talking about like little light workouts. I was running four and a half miles every single day, seven days a week. And I was also like, lift, uh, not necessarily lifting heavy weights, but I was doing calisthenics and lifting light weights, like working out heavy, heavy, hard workouts. Mind you, this is also when I was in the military. So there was also mandatory PT that we had to do. So even if there were days where we had mandatory PT, I would still stack my two workouts on top of that mandatory PT. Um, I would force myself to work out outside in the hot Florida sun because I was like, at least I'm burning more calories. And it was just not healthy. Even doing all of those things, I was still gaining weight. And um, so I really struggled with issues with my thyroid for I guess a decade and a half before I got my thyroid under control, <laughs> um, which was literally just temporary. So I've dealt with back and forth of dealing with um, hormonal imbalances that have caused me to hold on to weight, um, to gain weight, to hold on to it, all of the things. And on top of, you know, just a bunch of other things such as emotional eating, I talk a little bit in, um, I did a video about um, gaining weight after having plastic surgery. Um, I'll probably end up posting that one, I don't know, before or after this video, but I'll leave a link so you guys can check that video out as well. And it kind of goes into some of the life trauma that I've dealt with that kind of caused me to lean on food more than I probably should. So one thing I will say about being on semaglutide, it has definitely re-triggered my brain and the thinking that I have behind food. Not always craving food, not always craving the sugary sweets that I tend to lean towards um, and a bunch of other things. Um, so it has been a blessing for me. It's been a, a phenomenal tool for me for helping me to lose weight. And I'm excited to see where things go. I have been on the semaglutide for a total of 10 weeks now. I am at the, um, one milligram dose at the time. And I have lost almost 16 pounds. I'm at like 15.6 pounds lost total. And I feel amazing. Like I, I feel amazing. You guys, it feels great to look at myself in the mirror and to see the changes, the visible changes to my body. You can tell in my waistline, it is significantly smaller. You can tell in my face. Oh my goodness. Looking at older pictures of myself my face was around like Thomas the tank engine, like around a, a whole circle. And now you can actually see the definition in my cheekbones. You can see my dimples again. And it's a good feeling to look at myself and to see the changes in my body. I feel a lot lighter like that. I don't think I realized how heavy I felt. And when you feel a lot lighter, like I have more pep in my step. I have more energy for the day. I am sleeping better. All of the things are kind of playing a part um, in me feeling better. Um, and so it's, it's a good feeling to both like look at myself and see the differences and to feel the differences in my everyday life. So let's talk about some of the things that I changed because lifestyle changes are inevitable. You have to make lifestyle changes in order to work through this. Initially, when I first started the medication, week one, I started on the initial dose, which is 0.25 milligrams of the semaglutide. And that first week I lost six pounds, you guys. And I did not make any lifestyle changes. I wasn't eating any healthier. Um, I wasn't any more active than I normally am. Of course I work as a registered nurse and um, I work three days a week. I always work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, every week. So I am busy on those days. I am very busy. I also have my business. So I'm working seven days a week right now. Um, but not all seven of those days are always up and active and busy days. It really depends on my patient and my client load, right? So I didn't make any lifestyle changes the first week. I was eating junk food still. <laughs> um, to include hot Cheetos. <laughs> but I lost six pounds. So that was like, whoa, it was super eye-opening for me. The very next week, I did make a couple of changes. I tried to be a little bit more active. I started wearing my Fitbit again, and I set a goal for myself to do 10,000 steps a day. Um, I'll be honest, I am very busy. Like I said, I work seven days a week between being an entrepreneur, having a full-time job, and being a full-time single parent. I'm not making that goal every single day, but it is a great goal for me to work towards. Some days when I'm busy at work, I hit that goal. Sometimes I'm not even close to that goal because I have to force myself to sit down and get stuff done 
for my business. But that second week, I lost another uh, 2.5 pounds. And that was a really good feeling to look at the scale and be like, all right, I see the difference, you know? Um, after that, I got a little bit stagnant. I did not lose weight for like four weeks. I was losing, like, I lost weight, but it wasn't significant weight. It was like 0.2 pounds or 0.3 pounds or something like that. Or I would step on the scale and there would be no change. So that was a little bit discouraging. It was at this point, I really had to make a decision. Like, okay, I know that I have a, a pretty significant goal of where I want to be, not necessarily pound wise, but where I want to see my body. Um, I'm trying not to focus too much on the scale, but also look at my body and how I feel and how I look in my clothes. And I know that that's, I got a ways to go. So I'm gonna have to put the work in. I'm going to have to work harder. I'm going to have to be a little bit more consistent with my eating habits and with um, my activity. So really focusing on getting my 10,000 steps a day, drinking more water, and um, even if I'm not able to work out, I try and just get up, do a couple squats here and there, do a couple push-ups here and there, do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, in between all the rest of the chaos that I have going on in my life. I will say that we just recently moved. I did a little life update video on that and my new neighborhood does have gorgeous trails. Like it's a bunch of new communities that are all backed up like houses and apartment complexes. And so it's all like freshly paved. It's all brand new. It's very clean and safe place. So I've been walking and running more um, and adding that has definitely um, improved. Um, it got me out of that plateau that I was in. After that, the weight started to really come off a little bit more consistently. I Running has always been therapeutic for me. So honestly, it's a great way for me to get the stress out from my busy day, but also to help me focus on my bigger goal. Um, I have set a goal for myself. I'm kind of scared to say out loud. I want to run a half marathon. That is my long-term goal. So um, working on that, it's been a little tough just jumping back into running. I recognize that the heavier I am, the harder it is on my joints and my flat feet. But I'm, um, I feel a lot lighter now that I'm starting to lose the weight and I feel, I see the improvement in my runs. Um, I'm able to run longer before I get tired. My long, like my distance that I'm able to run is a lot longer. I feel more energized. I don't feel like absolutely exhausted. Like I need to lay on the floor and catch my breath for like 30 minutes after my runs. Don't, don't get it twisted. I'm still out of shape and I still <laughs> struggle, but I'm not struggling as much. Um, and I don't feel as much like pain in my, in like my joints and in my feet after my runs. So those are some of the changes I've seen in my body. I'll post a couple like before and after photos. I don't want to say completely after cause I'm still losing weight, but I'll post some photos so you guys can see the difference in my body and some of the changes that I've seen pros and cons of being on the semaglutide. Let's talk about those next. So overall, there are definitely a million more pros than there are cons of being on the semaglutide. So we'll just briefly talk about the cons first because there's literally only a couple of them. Um, the One of the cons for me would be some of the side effects. The only time that I really deal with side effects are the day of my shot, I might feel a little bit nauseous. Um, and sometimes the day after my shot, I feel a little bit nauseous, but it, it's not anything that's consistent. It just kind of comes and goes occasionally. Um, and I will take Dramamine. <laughs> That's the name I couldn't remember earlier. Dramamine. Um, I have not had to take anything more like any nausea medication at all, but I do have access to that if it's something that I need and something that I also offer to my clients if they need it. But honestly, my nausea has never been that bad. Um, another really great thing that I have been using as a tool to help with my nausea is ginger tea. Um, one of my coworkers, who's a huge tea drinker, she always has like a whole array of teas in her bag. And one day I felt nauseous at work. Um, I tend to, when I do get nauseous, it tends to be like in the middle of the night since I'm up working night shift. So usually like midnight, one o'clock, I might feel a little nauseous. And um, she gave me this ginger and lemon tea. You guys, it's so good. And my nausea was gone just like that. 
Previous to that, I was drinking like ginger ale and I felt like it helped, but at the same time, all the bubbly would make me gassy after. So I was not a fan of that. Although I love ginger ale, it's like my favorite soda. Um, I didn't want the bubbly gassy side of it. So the ginger tea was a perfect alternative for that for me. Um, and I feel like it knocks my nausea out like that. And it kind of like gives me like a warm fuzzy feeling. It like the nausea subsides within minutes when I drink the ginger tea. I had a couple bouts of like bubble guts where I was like, ooh, this, let me run to the toilet. But it hasn't happened that many times to me. I will say I changed my shot date. I used to do my shots on Sundays because my spa is not open on Sundays. So I go in, I do like cavitation treatment on myself or wood therapy treatment. Um, and then I give myself my shot. But what I realized is since I work Sunday nights, that's when I start to feel nauseous the most. So I changed my shot day to Saturday. It allows me some time to rest. It also allows me some time in case I do have the bubble guts, in case I do feel nauseous. It's Saturday night and I don't have to go to work until the next night. So that's something to think about if you are on the medication is giving yourself a, your shot on a day where you have a little bit more time to rest. I have been hearing from my clients and other people that I know that are on it. They feel really tired the day that they give themselves their shot or the day after. So that's something else to consider. I think that's happened to me a couple of times. Usually when I increase my dose, I might just feel like a little bit tired. So I'll take like cat naps here and there. But I haven't noticed anything like extreme when it comes to like really, really being fatigued or anything like that. Um, but something else for you to consider if you are on days where you are increasing your dose, just allow yourself some time to rest, allow your body that opportunity to rest. Um, or, you know, in case you are sick, you have that flexibility to not do it on a day where you have a lot of stuff planned or um, a day where you know that you have to be a bunch of places, okay? Um, something to think about. So let's talk about the pros of semaglutide. For me, the biggest pro is the weight loss. Obviously, I'm losing the weight, but the underlying thing is it's helping me to make better choices for myself um, as far as my relationship with food and my relationship with exercise. Again, I'm starting to fall back in love with exercising and running and I'm starting to feel so much better. Um, the biggest pro for me has been my blood pressure, you guys. Now as a nurse, I lecture people all the time. Well, I don't wanna say lecture, but I do patient teaching with people all the time about their blood pressure and the risk of having hypertension. And I've been walking around doing that with hypertension myself, okay? <laughs> um, I got fussed at um, by my doctor about my blood pressure because I was you know, I was really living in a very stressful time during COVID. I was working six 12s a week. Yes, six days a week. I was working 12 hour shifts in the ICU and working as a COVID travel nurse. So all over the country. And like I said, when you're a night shift nurse, you eat junk food and drink sugary beverages and monsters and Red Bulls and junk food all night long to stay awake, to stay like alert and it's, it's terrible, but that's what I was doing. And my blood pressure was sky high, like absolutely sky high. Um, I will say that now that I'm starting to lose the weight, I've been tracking my blood pressure. My blood pressures are beautiful now, you guys. I'm talking like 110. Like I've never seen my blood pressure at 110. I mean, probably when I was like in middle school or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> but the fact that my blood pressure went from 150s and 160s down to 110 is the biggest pro for me because I know that I had issues with hypertension and I knew that I was trying to do all the things to get my hypertension under control. And I would, sometimes my blood pressure would be good. I would see it at 130s or 140s, but I knew the underlying thing I really, really needed was to lose weight because this extra weight on my body was definitely not helping with my blood pressure. Um, on top of that, I definitely worked through a very stressful time in my life. I am now already moved into my new place and that stress of being in my old place and having to hire a lawyer to get out of that situation, all of that situation stressed me out so bad that my blood pressure was really high dealing with that as well. So. 
overall the lifestyle changes and life changes on top of the weight loss and taking the semaglutide my blood pressure has been phenomenal and that is the biggest pro for me so far is seeing my blood pressure where it needs to be and i know that has a lot to do with me feeling a lot better as well because when you're walking around with hypertension you get like this ringing in your ears and you just don't feel good overall i was having headaches and things like that and just getting rid of that played a huge part in me feeling so much better and just um, my overall health in general so that's the biggest pro for me um, overall we have weight loss the healthier habits decreasing of the cravings um, and my blood pressure those are all my pros so far all right so along the lines of taking the medication and the form that the medication comes in another question i got is do i rotate my sites and the answer is yes anytime you're taking a medication you're injecting into your body you don't want to use the same site because the receptors in that area can honestly just get used to the medication or they could be overwhelmed by that medication and then it doesn't have the same effect right so um some of the areas that you would want to give this medication is it's a subcutaneous shot so the subcutaneous fat is just that fat that kind of sits on the top of um, in certain areas. So that's going to be the bottom of your arm back here, this fat back here, your belly, um, or your thighs. I myself, I prefer to give myself my shots in my arms, um, the back of my arms or my belly. I have noticed a little bit more nausea when I give myself my shots in my stomach. So I prefer to do them in the back of my arm. Um, and I have seen a lot of videos of people on TikTok that just keep track of that. Like, when I give myself my shot in my thighs, I don't have any symptoms. So that's the area that they choose. I would just say, be careful, make sure that you're rotating your left side versus your right side. And you're not always giving yourself your shot in the exact same spot every single week, because you're going to start to notice like, Hey, I'm not, I'm not seeing any differences. I'm not seeing any change. And that's because the receptors in that site just may be completely like, I guess, used to the medication is I guess the easiest way to explain it. So make sure you're rotating your sites and that you're keeping track of how you feel when you do rotate your sites and, and keeping track of your side effects that you're having. All right, so now we're on to suggestions. What I would suggest. Number one suggestion is if you, if any of this stuff that I spoke about today resonates with you, talk to your healthcare provider about getting some semaglutide. I do recognize that not all healthcare providers are on board with this medication. So if it's something that you uh, feel passionate about and something that you really want to try and your provider is not willing to prescribe it, don't let that be the end all be all for you. There are other options as far as where you can get your semaglutide and um, you can go to weight loss management clinics. You can go to, um, there's a lot of med spas or health and wellness spas that offer it as well under the supervision of a medical provider. I would just be careful when you are getting it. I know a lot of you has probably already seen on like Facebook marketplace and things like that, where people are like, we have some glutide for $250 a month. Like, please be careful. Please do your research on these places. Please make sure that it is an actual licensed healthcare professional that is offering it to you. Make sure that you are doing your due diligence of doing your research um, of the place as well as the medication prior to starting it. Write down all your questions and take them to your healthcare provider and you know, um, ask the questions that you need to ask for you to feel comfortable to be on this medication. This is not just like Tic Tacs and, um, you know, and simple things like that. This is actual medication, you guys. So you need to ask questions. You need to make sure this is right for you and that you feel comfortable taking this before you inject it into your body. Okay. Don't just do it because your friends are on it and they lost five pounds. Like you have to make sure that you are okay with your decision and that you feel comfortable with starting this medication. And also make sure that your provider is actually like doing what they need to do. They're taking your labs and following your labs and all of the things. Make sure they're answering your questions about titrating the medication and things like that. Also, my next suggestion is get something to track your progress. There are so many different ways to track your progress on semaglutide, not just your weight, you guys. Your body, how your body feels, how you look in your clothes, making better life choices for yourself without feeling burdened or forced to make those choices. Like every time you reach for a salad or a protein shake over a greasy burger and fries, 
these are positive life changes, right? And that is something that you can track and monitor. So get yourself a journal. It doesn't necessarily have to be this one. This is the journal that I provide for all of my clients who are on my weight loss management program. I will have this available for the public. If you guys are interested in purchasing it, you can get the physical copy of it or you can get the PDF version emailed to you. So I'll make that available to you guys down below if you're interested, but track your progress every single day, every single week, all of the positive changes that are happening in your life. I think, you know, a lot of us, we don't keep track of the little things. And then five, six weeks later, we're like, wait a minute, my clothes are, my clothes are big. I used to be able to fit these pants four weeks ago, right? So if you're tracking your progress along the way, you can kind of have a better idea of how things are really going. I talk a little bit more about this in like the welcome video for my program, but it just goes over like your weekly meal planner, your fitness planning and things like that, your food intake. Um, it has a note section in here for you to write notes, like keeping track of your meals. If you eat something and it's a healthy meal and it makes you feel good, write that down so that you can plan to add that into your health, um, into your diet consistently. If you eat something and you're like, oh my gosh, I felt so gross and I felt so nauseous afterwards, write that down too so you can avoid it, right? Write down how you feel every single day, days when you're more tired, days when you're more nauseous. I don't know if I mentioned before earlier in the video, but some people are tracking like if I give myself my shot in my arm, I feel more nauseous than if I do it in my belly. Write things like that down so you can avoid those things that are making you feel ill or making you have more symptoms and side effects, right? But you need something like this to track your progress, how many pounds you've lost, your measurements every single week, or at least I would say at least every two to three weeks, you should be measuring yourself and keeping track of things like that because there are more than, there's more than just the scale to measure your um, your progress when you are on a weight loss management program. There's so many ways you can measure your progress. So you gotta keep track of them and journal them. Um, journal some of the mental changes that you're making, some of the healthy habits that you're choosing, every time you're working out, how you're feeling, certain workouts and how they make you feel. Like if you love Pilates more than you like running, running feels like torture, that's okay. You don't have to run, right? Pick and choose what makes you feel good and what works for you and for your body. The last piece of advice that I would have for you guys is your meal planning. Now, when you're on a medication that's going to make you feel not as hungry, it can be kind of difficult and I'll explain why. If you are not hungry, sometimes you may forget to eat and eating is still very important. Your body still needs nutrients and needs high protein when you're on this medication. But if you have a habit of just going because you are like, oh, I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry, you may get to the very end of your day and you're like a little shaky or like, if you're like me, I'll start having a headache and I'm like, why do I have a headache? When's the last time I ate? Oh, I haven't eaten today, right? So keep like protein bars or something like that in your bag where you can have easy access to like snacks protein shakes and things like that, like that you can take on the go with you. Um, like I said, you want to eat less, less like greasy foods, less, um, less carbs and higher levels of protein while you're on semaglutide. Um, so try and keep little things like that available to you. Semaglutide doesn't necessarily drop your blood sugar levels, but I have seen some people who become hypoglycemic because they forget to eat completely. And you don't wanna to get to that point where you're shaky or you're getting a headache because you haven't eaten all day because you forgot to eat, right? So you do still wanna make sure that you're eating small meals throughout the day, high protein meals, um, that's the, going to be the best thing for you. And if you can't get to a full, full meal, try and incorporate um, snacks that have high protein in them along your day. Um, and protein shakes and things like that. If this video was helpful for you, make sure you subscribe. I will have more content coming up on my weight loss journey, um, my entrepreneur journey, my nurse life. Um, so I would love to have you guys follow here at Life with Lene. And um, make sure you hit the notification bell so you guys are notified whenever I post new content. Thanks again for watching you guys. I love you and I'll see you in the next video.